Somebody bought me this wine glass for Christmas as a gag gift. Guess what? Jokes on them because I need it today. Whole glass of wine, one whole bottle of wine, one glass. I need it today. I need it today. Every single day. Let's talk. Y'all already know why we're here. We're going to talk about the Asante Brothers today, my 600 pound life. But before we do, go ahead and subscribe to my channel so you could be a part of this 600 pound community. We got a lot going on here. We got a lot to talk about today. So far, though, I think there has been five cast members from this season that has actually seen the video that I'm talking about them, I'll put the links down below. And I promise y'all a video of a past season, yes. And after this video, that's going to be the next video I drop. So stay tuned. It's uh, much requested, much sought out, and it's going to be interesting. I don't even know how I'm going to do it. I don't even know. But we got to talk about Steven and Justin and the Asante brothers. And y'all, I had to pull out the big guns today. I had to. How was I supposed to talk about this without pulling out the big guns? How was I supposed to talk about this? I did not even want... Oh, this video been stressing me out. The Ashanti brothers stress me out. I like to watch 600 Pound Life for motivation. I like to watch it for inspiration. I like to watch it to keep me on in check. I like to watch the show to feel good. Watching them don't make me feel good. <laughs> Watching this episode, I was not motivated and inspired. I was sad and confused and mad and puzzled. And I was just like, oh my God, this is too much. This is, oh my God, it's just too much. But we, we got to get into it. I'm going to try. I promise you, I'm going to try to make this a quick video because I can't talk about this for too long. I really can't. I can't even go there for too long because it's too much. Talk about this. I wrote down. I wrote, I wrote. I had to take a lot of notes in this video. I'm sorry. I'm reading from these notes because I had to take a lot because it was so much. The Shanti Brothers, this was part four. If you are not familiar with them, then good. You know, you've had your life up until now without knowledge of the Ashanti brothers and the drama and dramatics and theatrics and dysfunction of this family. So you've lived your life up until now without it. Now it's been introduced to you. I'm sorry. Join the rest of us. This is part four and I've seen it along the whole way. Okay. They from Rhode Island, right? I can't, don't know how old they are. Justin is 28, 29. Steven is older than that, so he probably in his 30s. So we this this is an informal review. We just gonna try to get through it. Okay. So the first about seven minutes of the show just really caught you up to date. And if you didn't know nothing about these brothers, like I said, that's good. Because they hadn't been introduced to your life. And so you've been living a great life, not knowing about them. But now you know. Just the quickest rundown. Justin started on the show. He was 730 pounds. He had to get a medical RV transport the whole way there. He cussing and fussing his daddy out, cussing and fussing his brother out. He get there. He manipulative using drugs. He treated the staff like crap. I mean, he just went back and forth, the drama and the theatrics. Meanwhile, I think if you go look online, you can find some homemade videos of him. And I'm going to use Dr. Now's words. I'm not going to use none of Toya words today. These are going to be other professionals words okay because that's what we doing dysfunctional dr now said this was the most dysfunctional patient he'd ever had 
He also used the word severe psychological issues. He also used the words addictive pathological personalities. So this is what we're dealing with when we're talking about Stephen. I mean, we have to know when we talk about him, first of all, just to get to 730 pounds, you know that there's a lot of dysfunction and problems going on in the life. So let's just talk about it knowing going in that there's a lot of problems. So we're going to treat it as such. We know off that, that he has a lot of problems. And his brother is right behind him. So we know that there's a lot of problems and a lot of dysfunction. Now, we got introduced to his brother, Justin, in the beginning, too, because his brother came down and acted like he wanted to be in the program, but at the time, he was going back and forth, back and forth, and he ended up not being in the program at the time. But then, since then, he's changed his mind. Now, we on part four, and he actually did go, go ahead and start getting into the program. So, that's where the story picks up. It's been a year and seven months. The story pick up. Steven, that's the oldest one. That's the one who first got on the show. He had got his surgery, the sleeve, the gastric sleeve, a couple months ago. That's where the story picks up. Justin had gotten the program, but he decided he wasn't going to get in the program. But then he decided he was going to move down there and start the program. That's where it picks up in Justin's story. Again, I got a lot of notes. Because ain't no way I could keep up with this stuff without my notes and this drink. Mm -hmm. So, some more words I want to throw out there that we're going to talk about now, and then we're going to talk about the very end that Dr. Now used. Act like kids, depended on their dad, um, shaved his head like a five year old kid, and out of control. I didn't use those words. None of those are Toya's words. All of those are Dr. Now's words. So, we're just going to go with that. So, scene starts, and actually when it started, I was very optimistic. When it started, Stephen was getting up, and he was walking around, cooking for himself, feeding himself, walking around the apartment. Now, if you followed this story before, you know that, that this is new. Now, Stephen could walk before, but you was like surprised when he did get up and walk. And I used to be scared when he walked because he looked unstable, and it just looked like, I don't know. It just looked like, I'm sorry, let me blush my, I'm sweating. Got me sweating, y'all. I'm not even going to edit this out. I'm just leaving this in because that's the kind of, that's the kind of review that this is today because we trying to make this quick and we trying to get through this. So let's just do both. So it starts out, like I said, I was shocked because Stephen was walking good getting himself. He wasn't eating nothing crazy. He was sitting there drinking his broth and walking around the apartment. Then it started showing him working out. He had some workout equipment. He was working out. I'm like, did Stephen, did he turn a new leaf here? Is he changing his life out here? Is that what we're doing? Did he see himself on TV maybe and decided that he was going to turn a leaf? I was like, okay, maybe. And he did the first scene, the camera, when it was talking to uh, Steven, he talked like he was sober. He talked like he was sane. He had clarity. He was like, yes, I want my brother. I hope he get in the program. I think it'll be good for him. You know, I want us to mend our relationship. I want to live a good, healthy life. I'm losing weight. I want to reclaim my life. Like he was talking real sober and clear headed. And I was like, maybe this guy didn't. Turned a new leaf. We all are entitled to change. And that's what I thought initially. Then it shows Justin. Now, remember, Justin had opened a hobby shop. If you don't remember, he had opened a hobby shop. And so it showed Justin in his hobby shop. He said he was following Dr. Now's program. He said he was being active. And he said all of this stuff, right? So then that's the, that's the way it starts with Justin. Then Justin's going to move down to Texas to be a part of the program. But he letting us know from the beginning, look, I'm not living with Steven. I'm not going to have much contact with him. It's best if we keep our distance so I can get the help that I need. I recognize that I need help. And then I think the show probably prompted this for the dramatics and theatrics of it all. I think the show made them do a FaceTime. So Justin and Steven, the brothers, they did a FaceTime. And it was kind of cordial. It was like, hey, what's up? 
yeah, I'm coming down there to Texas. He like, good, you go get Stephen. Like, good, you go get the surgery. That's gonna be good for you. Justin's like, yeah, I think I am. Good, how you doing? What up? What up? Whatever, whatever. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. And I was like, okay, maybe we, maybe this is, maybe this is gonna work out. Again, I took all. I gotta read from these notes because ain't no way I could get through this without that. Okay, y'all. So after the video chat. The dad. Now we got to talk about the dad. Now, should we talk about the dad now or should we talk about the dad later? We'll talk about the dad now and later. How about that? So the dad, I mean, what we got to say about the dad. First of all, one thing we got to say about the dad, at least he there. Okay, let's give it to the dad. He stuck around in the midst of all this dysfunction and chaos. He's still there. Although Dr. Now said he's the problem. And it started with him. But he could have left. A lot of men have left and abandoned their family. So kudos to Steven Sr. because he did not leave them boys. And he stayed there and he's still there. So I'm going to give him that. He loves his kids too. You can tell he's really genuinely concerned about the boys. I'm going to give him that. It's just that this man does not know how to communicate with anybody, especially his children, his boys. And not only does he not know how to communicate, he is like, enabler don't really do the word. It's not that he's such an enabler, it's just like, he is, he just let them do whatever. And we gonna touch and talk about that later. Again, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make this quick, y'all, I really am. Let me, let me keep moving. So they drive to Houston, we gotta talk about this scene. So they drive into Houston. They call Steven on Justin and the dad driving to Houston. They call Steven. And then Justin pop off right quick. He like, you know, I'm not gonna um, I ain't coming to see you. That's what Justin said, or something like that. And so the dad got mad, threatened Justin, and then he got mad, and then Steven got Justin got mad, and Justin goes off and hits the daddy. I'm like, y'all is just I don't know. I this Toya just take a drink. Mm -hmm. It was stressful. It was stressful to my life. I ain't watching it. I ain't watching that episode. I'm gonna go watch. Don't get me wrong. It's gonna be another episode. I'm gonna watch that. But you know how you rewatch 600 pound life episodes? I'm not rewatching this at all. Let me keep going. So, okay, so Justin, um, they get, they finally get to Houston, right? And then the dad goes see Steven. He's like, man, I am proud of you. You do look like you lost weight. I can tell that you lost weight. Steven like, oh, thank you. That's, you said something nice to me. I appreciate that. So they go see Dr. Now. Justin goes, Justin goes to see Dr. Now. He's 651 pounds. Mind you, he was supposed to lose weight and he didn't gain four pounds. So Dr. Now, like, look, he didn't, overall, since he's been in the program, he gained 47 pounds. Dr. Now, like, what's going on? He like, I'm eating chicken two, three times a day. That's it. Dr. Now, like, look, if I believe you, I'm just going to say I'm going to believe you. You're eating way too much. Your weight gain has slowed, but you ain't on track. I'm going to give you a 1,200-calorie diet. I'm going to tell you, show you what to eat. I need you to lose 60 pounds in a couple of months. You need to get serious. If you want to get in this program, you need to make some changes. I know you started making changes, but you need to make more changes. So Justin's like, okay, I'm going to do that. And then Steven goes in. Now, this is like his two-month post-op check. He does great. He's down to 523. Now, I told y'all he started at 730. So he done lost 95 pounds in the last two months, right? So he down a total of 207 pounds, right? And he told him, look, you, I'm shocked. Good job. Nobody was expecting it. Good job, Steven. So he told him, but I want you to continue therapy and continue on this track. You're doing good. Keep up the good work. So then Justin and the dad go see Steven. And it kind of was okay. It was kind of like, okay, I see Steven. He do look good. He did lose weight. All right. So it was kind of like, Maybe it's a chance that they could build their relationship. Who knows? Maybe. I don't know. 
But it's just was thinking, he's like, you know what? I can't be down here for this long. I got to go back and get back to my shop. I need to get away from Steven. I'm not about to be down here forever. So he calls Dr. Now's office and he's like, is it okay if I come back in a month and I lose 40 pounds? Dr. Now's office, they're like, okay, we can deal with that. That's all right. And so Steven, meanwhile, goes to the therapist. Now, this is Dr. Paradise. Thank goodness they didn't pair him with Lola because Lola, I, just me personally, I'm sorry. I, she ain't ready for this. Nobody ain't ready for this. But Lola, this is Dr. Paradise. I'm glad it's a man because I don't really know how women with Steven is either. I feel like sometimes, I'm going to leave that alone. Okay, again, I'm trying to get through this. Toy, hurry up. Get through this. Get through this. So he goes to see Dr. Paradise. He pretty much confesses, like, I was a terrible brother. I terrorized him. He said I tortured him every day for 18 years. I don't remember all of that. But Dr. Paradise was trying to get him to understand, like, that it's good that you're feeling like this way. Because if you want to get sober and get on the road to sobriety, one of the things you have to do is make amends. If you know anything about the 12-step program, get clean, part is making amends he's like so but before you make amends you got to acknowledge your wrong and steven still was like yeah i did wrong but he wasn't really ready to cop to the fact that he had did all that steven said he was doing by the way i honestly this is just all toya i don't know this i ain't heard this seen this but i feel like he he noted to verbal abuse and physical abuse the way that justin acts though Makes me feel like it was another component there. And I'm not going to say it, but I'm just going to leave it right there. Just made me think maybe something deeper, deeper, deeper happened that he ain't willing to say or discuss. But to me, I'm going to leave that right there. Again, I'm trying to get through. I promise y'all I'm trying to get through this. I, I'm trying to get through this. So anyway. So now, okay, Justin, he goes back to see Dr. Now. It's been one month. Maybe he called and negotiated. So it's been one month. He lost 47 pounds. Dr. Now's like, great. You did good. I'm going to approve you for surgery, but you need to stick to the diet. I'm going to have you surgery next month, but you need to lose 30 pounds, and you need to start on liquid diet. Justin's like, cool. So Justin has his surgery. And oh, my goodness, he had his surgery, but he, was, he almost didn't. He got scared. And then... The lady that was taking care of his shop, a friend, Tony, she came and talked him through it. But then a day or two after he was at surgery, here comes Justin. I'm like, this is about to be bad. Oh, my goodness. Why is Justin here? Don't nobody need this drama today. But they actually made it through it without all that cussing and fussing. They made it through. He came to visit him. It was kind of a okay visit, right? Now we have a problem. And Stephen comes over to Just Stephen comes over to where they staying at, where Justin and Dad staying at. And guess what? His pain pills, his post-surgical pain pills come up missing. So he's upset and he's hit heated. Then we find out though, this is what I'm talking about. The daddy, Stephen Sr., takes some of the pills. And gives them to Stephen, saying, you should be more grateful. You should be happy because you should be trying to help him get off of these drugs. So you giving him narcotics and he got a drug problem and he in a program. And Dr. Now it's in rehab, but you're going to literally give him pills. Not only did you give him pills, you stole pills from your son who actually needed it because he just had surgery to give to your other son who don't need him at all. He just supporting his drug habit. Is that what we doing? Seeing Stephen Sr.? That's what we did. Mm hmm That's what they did. I like my wine kind of chill, too. You see the frost on the glass? I kind of like my... I know red wine, you're not really supposed to chill, but I, I kind of like it a little chill. Not a lot chill, just a little. That's not what we're talking about. Toy, we're supposed to be getting through this video. So, Justin is mad because obviously the dad is taking sides. You're going to steal pills to give to this... He called him. What do he call him? Not a drug addict. He called him a... Maybe he did call him an addict. I think he did call him an addict. I'm trying to get through this, y'all. And then we see a special... If you watch the supersized edition, which I do, 
We've seen a super size edition where Justin is talking to Dr. Paradise. And here's where I think Justin is missing it. I'm going to save some of it for my dear Justin because I'm going to have one of those. But I'm going to save some of it. But I think Justin is still letting Stephen run and rule his life. And he won't, whatever Justin, Stephen did to him, we don't know. All the stuff, of course. But whatever it is, he won't move on with his life. It's like he's still stuck in it and he can't get past it. So Dr. Paradise was trying to get him to see like, hey, you holding all this stuff in, it's not hurting him. He moving on with his life. He may never give you the apology you want, but you need to be able to move on. And, and Justin, he just wasn't getting it. He just wasn't. So now let's get to the end of this. I'm wrapping this up, y'all. Let's get to the end of this. So the daddy, who been trying to get these two together all along, but Justin, Stephen, Justin been saying, look, I don't want to be with him. I don't want to be in the same room. It's limited interaction, but the dad go get Stephen and Justin, and they go all go to Dr. Now appointment together. Well, when Justin found out this, out, this, this was it for him. This was his end point. He was just like, I'm done. My daddy keep trying to interfere. He keep trying to put us together. I don't want to be with him. I don't want to be in the same room with him. Justin in the car, he breaks down. He throw a whole big tantrum. And he's like, you know what? I'm done. I'm flat out done. Meanwhile, Dr. Now up here being the psychologist, Dr. Now's like, look, Stephen, see, this is the problem. You don't parent these kids. You let them do what's and never they want to do. You don't discipline them. There's a fine line between love and discipline, and you have no knowledge of that. What you're going to do, you need to go out there and tell him he's going to come in and have this appointment because he needs to have this appointment. And you're not going to give him a choice. You're not asking him any questions. You're going to tell him that he's going to come in here. He's going to have this visit, and when he has this visit, it's going to be fine. If he chooses not to, the consequences are you're no longer going to support him. You're no longer going to take care of him. Well, let me tell you what the daddy do. Stephen Sr., he goes outside, disregards everything Dr. Now said. He didn't say not nothing that Dr. Now said. He went out there asking questions. He went out there giving him choices. He did, matter of fact, he did the exact opposite of what Dr. Now told him to do. I can't. I just. <laughs> he did the opposite of what Dr. Now told him to do. He did. That's what he did was the opposite. So, of course, he didn't go back in there. He didn't. He didn't care because he got a choice. And Dr. Now told him, he said, look. You give these kids too many choices. You up here giving these kids choices. He said, your child, your big grown kids act like kids because you allow them to. Oh, I wrote it down. Let me see. What did I write? Because I wrote it down because I knew I needed to write this mess down. Because this was too much. This was too stressful to me. I had to write this down. He said, let me see. What did he say? He said that the problem is these kids do whatever they want to do. He said, you don't act like a father. You always neutral and you need to change that. He said, you need to stop being there and supporting them. They need to grow up. Basically, that's what he said. Right. And so Justin didn't care about that. He gave him choices and options. So he didn't listen to what he said. So Justin didn't have his appointment. He did have his appointment with Steven, and Dr. Now was like, look, you done gained, he gained 34. By the way, he gained 34 pounds. After he had lost 95 pounds for two months, he come back the, the next month, he gained 34 pounds. So Dr. Now was like, look, first of all, I'm going to check you for, screen you for drugs. If there is anything in your system that should not be, we are done with you and you are out this program. But should it happen to come back negative and you're still in the program, I want you to lose, I think you're telling Mike, I want you to lose like 75 pounds in the next two months to get back in the program and get back on track. That's what he told him. Next thing we see, three days later, guess what the daddy did? Bought Justin a puppy. He did these. 
He threw a tip. Justin threw a whole temper tantrum. Didn't go see the doctor. Didn't follow up like he was supposed to do. Didn't do nothing he was supposed to do. And he went and bought him a pup. He bought him a whole puppy. A whole puppy. Y'all, I tried. I tried with 600 Pound Life. Believe me, I do. I This is my favorite show. I love these people. I feel so much empathy for these people. Like, I love this show. And I love what Dr. Now is doing. I don't care what nobody say. People say the show scripted. People do this and that. And the show show you this and that. But it's still saving lives out here. The show out here is still saving lives. It's still out here motivating people. So maybe it ain't a hundred, but it's still doctors out here doing stuff that they ain't did before because of Dr. Now. So, y'all, that's it. that was it. That was the show. We didn't find out about drug tests. We didn't find out nothing else. Steven and the dad, Justin and the dad moved back. And that's where it ended. So we're going to have to pick up on this drama another time and another day. I do do this series called Dear. Whoever the cast members. This the, I'm going to do two different ones. One's going to be Dear Justin. One's going to be Dear Steven. And it's going to be a brief description. It's going to be a letter. The premise, though, you have to leave positive comments. I don't know how this is going to go, guys. I don't know. I don't let any negative comments go on that video. So you have to leave only uplifting, positive, motivational comments for the cast members. So if you think you can abide by that, I understand. I get it. If you don't want to click that video, if you don't want to watch it, if you don't want to leave a comment, I get it. But I'm going to make it. And I hope you do, though, because Stephen needed, like anybody ever needed encouragement through all his antics, through all his sh sh charades and all his drama. He is a hurt little boy who need help. So I hope the community can come together and find some encouraging words for him during this time. I know y'all, just take a glass first and then muster up some words to say to him. But if you haven't already joined this community and subscribe, what are you waiting for? I mean, let's talk about this. Thousands of y'all watch my videos. Y'all don't subscribe. I'm taking that personal. Like if you gonna sit up and watch my video, but you're not gonna subscribe, I done had a good little piece of wine, so I can say I can say this now. Y'all gonna sit up and watch my videos and not subscribe? No, I'm just joking, y'all. But thank y'all to all my new subscribers. I do appreciate your love and support and all y'all comments. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. So thank you so much for watching. Especially if you still watch it right now, you a real six. If you are watching this right now. You are a real 600 pound lifer and I appreciate you and I thank you and I'll see you in the next video. Please subscribe to my mommy's video. Please just find the name and